This is a video I am very excited to make. In one of these boxes, I, I don't know which one, I've been getting so many deliveries for the M3. We're gonna open this one, because it's the big one. The big one's probably right. This, uh, this may be the other thing. <laughs> oh, that's, that's wrong. You shouldn't see this. Really? It's just this? Oh yeah. This, my friends, is a computer. Not just any computer, this is a pretty interesting one. This is actually a Windows dev kit for now. Now you're probably like, Theo, you are not a developer. What the hell are you doing with the dev kit? This is so cool and I am so interested in this technology. The best way for me to explain it is with this. This, well, this is my iPhone mini and I absolutely love it, but it's nothing to do with an iPhone specifically. I, over the years, have purchased many laptops. This one, um, is to where I, a Windows person, ended up here. There's kind of a few reasons as to why. And the main reason is ARM. So ARM is basically the future, possibly. Very soon, we will have Windows machines that mostly run on ARM. Your laptops will be more efficient. They'll be able to do things that kind of struggled previously. This is the first step in that direction. And of course, eventually gaming. Now that is the worrisome part. ARM is good, but it's in your phone. And have you played a phone game? Like, don't get me wrong, there are some very good looking phone games, but it doesn't quite have the same feel. So I am going to try and run games on this. I'm gonna try AAA games. I'm gonna try indie games. And then maybe it'll eventually just end up being a thing that displays pretty pictures on a TV in the background. But this is a computer. This! I don't know, it, it just, the future excites me. I was a little bit nervous. You can actually, you can bring up a tweet. I tweeted that I was really nervous about ARM. <laughs> and then I, um, well, I bought two. So I've got one and Meadow's got one and I've got other Windows laptops too. Of course, Windows have the advantage of gaming. I've got my Aero here, which I use for gaming. And there's a reason I have a Mac, even though I am much more a Windows and PC and customer freedom, Purse, I say that. There's a reason that I, a Windows person, went to the Mac. That's obviously because dedicated chips to process and render and encode, decode my videos. My main PC upstairs is still Windows and it will always probably be Windows just for that customization and PCI cards. A lot of you guys will know, once you unplug a laptop, a Windows laptop, you lose a lot of your performance. That does not happen on this. And it was before ARM, but if Microsoft is going ARM and it's more efficient and is this is this better? I think, uh, I think that's it. That's the dev kit. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Let's jump in. Let's set it up and get going. Hello, it's on. Amazing, I wasn't sure if that was gonna work. I have to use this Apple dongle because I need HDMI. But like, look at the size of this thing compared to this. I, I'm just curious. Let's do some testing. I'm here like shaking my mouse. I haven't plugged my mouse in. <laughs> so, so far, this is all pretty normal. It just seems like a normal Windows machine. I mean, to be fair, I don't think I've set up Windows 11 more than once. So to say it's completely normal, can't really say. Naming the device Windows ARM, of course. There's so much waiting. I just, come on, let me play some games. Now I must say, this is not gonna replace any of my main systems. At least I don't think it is. This is a dev kit. It's the most simple. You can actually stack these to get multiple performance. And that's really cool, the scalability of it. Efficiency is the most notable thing. And I think the future consoles may follow this path. It's already trying to get me to sign up for Game Pass. I, I, skip for now. I'm sorry, Microsoft. Should have given me a code with it. That would have been... Wait, I might have one. And boom, it's on. We're ready. Oh, I noticed that. That I was a little bit delayed there for a second. So ARM is supposed to be super efficient. Right now, this is going to be just basic. There's not going to be many dedicated chips within this chipset. I think it's just a standard mobile processor at this rate. And we're going to do the very first thing that uh, anyone should do. Look how many times they popped this thing up. <laughs> Please use it, please. That was a pretty fast experience at downloading Google Chrome right there. <laughs> so we're actually running at 4K here. Let's do a little bit of scaling to a hunt. No, that's, 
<laughs> might be a little bit too extreme. <laughs> so we're currently running at 60 hertz, which is obviously not fantastic, but that is what my monitor is and my capture card. So that's that's normal. So a lot of you are wondering why this is so cool. In the past, Microsoft tried to do ARM, but they actually made a dedicated version of Windows that didn't run proper apps. So every program that you could possibly think of will run on this. It's actually got a translation layer. So it's translating from normal x86 to ARM, which is super cool. While they're not the first to do it, I want to try their translation layer. Let's get Steam installed and try some games. Okay, we're downloading a bunch of games. I, I don't expect most of these to work. We're running on mobile hardware. I'm expecting Stardew Valley to work and maybe Car X, because that's a much smaller game. You can turn it way down. I've even got Blur downloading. So I guess we'll... Uh... We'll see how we get on. It has been so long since I played Stardew Valley. This is the most simple game. It's a game I definitely want to get back into, but I'm curious how is the most simple of game got... It works. Oh, bit of a stutter there. Bit of a stutter. So this is constantly being translated from its original format into ARM. Now, granted, this, this could probably run on mobile, but I thought I would give it a chance with something basic first. Okay, so it's got a little bit confused here. It seems to think that the game bar link needs a program to open. It, it, it's very confused. I am wired in. Oh, it's just disconnected. Into the controller because this does not work. That's a right now thing. The last thing they've done is adapted these drivers to work on ARM yet. But anyway, the reason you're here is racing games. So let's try Car X. Let's go. It's loading. Oh, oh, okay. Here's where we <laughs> we're at already you can clearly oh my god it is not going well <laughs> that's me moving the stick this is where the translation thing gets a little bit sketchy we're probably on max settings aren't we i mean we're on 4k i think that's something we should turn down all the way to 1080p straight away that should help we've got texture quality on high we can bring that down oh we've got actually just a slider we can use let's put it on low boom we have got a smooth frame, but it looks like us. <laughs> what are these textures? That is terrible. Okay, I need to know what the frame rate is, but I can already tell you this is not, this is not running well. I'm, now tell me Car X is a mobile game. <laughs> it actually has a feature to show the frame rate counter. Let's see, what we got? 25 frames a second. Mate, I can't play this. This is unplayable. <laughs> now, I don't want to give ARM a bad rep. The fact that this is being emulated at all is amazing. And of course, this is the most basic form. This is a dev kit. This is not got anything really fancy about it. As I said with the Macs, the Macs are now, well, better when they're on ARM. Maybe not in a GPU department, but they can still play the three games you can play on a Mac. <laughs> Once this becomes more and more popular, what you're going to see is apps natively created for ARM. And especially when it comes to Car X Street and other games that are also on mobile, well, that's probably a little bit easier for those guys. Addy, my frame rate's so bad, guys, that I could not do well in the event <laughs> what can we, can we go lower than how about 720p that sounds like a great idea we'll turn the smoke off as well that might actually help but in the garage it's it's running all right yeah there we go 30 frames a second that's right what the heck what the f <laughs> how about i rename the video the distant future of gaming Listen, this is one game. Maybe Need for Speed 2015 will run better. Why 2015? Because it's the only one that gives me my save game on Steam. <laughs> In some time, your consoles, your PCs, your phones, your watches, everything will be ARM-based. It might just take a while. So back to the desktop, we've got Blur, we've got Karma... Oh, it's, it, it paused the downloads. Fantastic. Here we go. Karma... <laughs> Again... This is 4K. If I stacked maybe a hundred of these, we could probably get 60 frames at 4K. All right, change it to 720p and low and... Hey, this is not the worst thing ever. Uh, if maybe I was on a screen size of the Nintendo Switch, which, hey, you wouldn't be surprised to know Nintendo Switch is also ARM. That's why I didn't get that many games. I, I don't think I even want to try playing any more of this. Does it run? Uh, technically? Wait, why am I even going to try and run 2015? <laughs> oh, man. I think we're having a problem with the EA app. It just keeps opening and closing and open. Oh, man. 
I was so ready to play Need for Speed. Of course, while it is new and the translation layer is new, you're not gonna have everything work. What? Ah! Oh, stop giving me hope. 60 frames on the cutscenes, ladies and gentlemen. Blur. Blur. Oh, oh, oh. You know what? It's it's 41 frames. That's that's not it's not bad. This this could be okay. Beautiful cutscene of blur. Gotta watch at least a couple. Yes! Jump into the single player. I don't think the sync yeah, the, the data doesn't sync between. Uh let's jump into the graphic settings. We're on the lowest. Let's jump it down to 1080p, no anti-aliasing. Right! This this is this is great. <laughs> this is going so well. Uh, this is running so smoothly. I had to run it in the window, otherwise it would just do that weird color again. Come on, game. Keep it nice and steady. We can... Stop trying to be cutting every five seconds. seconds. Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Ah! Let's give this a go <laughs> if this works well yes midnight club 2 wait what if this works well i think this might actually be a pretty good emulation device right now i think that might be the best case scenario for you, or a media box or something of course this is a dev kit i've overspent on it i'm gonna tell you how much i spent on it <laughs> get out how are you big boy oh my god this is this is okay right yo look at this Midnight Club 2. I'm not playing any settings. It's probably rendering at 4K and I've got a nice 40 frames. 38, 42 frames a second. Yeah, the frame pacing might be off a little bit, but this is things I can probably fix. This is actually not a bad idea. Maybe. Oh, I wonder if most 105 would run well on this. I say classic games and they say, it's an old game now. It's not as old as this, but it's, it's old. Also, I didn't know you could actually just run people down on this. Oh no, I've gone the wrong way. Boom. <laughs> See, you can't do that on the new Midnight Club. I say new, like, oh my God. So do I think this box is the future of PC and console gaming? Because that's the way I thought it was gonna go. Um, Maybe one day. I think we'll still need dedicated GPUs and that's something that most laptops don't do. So I still don't think we're gonna get to a world where the laptops are gonna do as well as the desktops. I mean, that's the case in the CPU department and also the encoding and every other thing department. Gaming, maybe not, but we'll see. Let me know what you think. Be sure to smash like, subscribe if you are new and hopefully you enjoyed this video. I spent 500 pounds on this. So please do become a member. <laughs> it did help me a little bit. Peace.